I have always wanted to build a radio transmitter with no final amplifier transistor. Today I succeeded. In this video I'll discuss briefly how I did it. Maybe I'm cheating because I'm using the FT817 as a high power signal generator. The 1 watt from the FT817 drives this high level balance modulator. It uses 24 1N4148 diodes. I started with 4 diodes in the conventional mixer circuit but found that when you added more diodes and increased the input then you could also boost the output. Audio generated by the laptop computer with the RISPR program is amplified by this IC audio amplifier an LM1875. That's quite effective as a high power audio amplifier for a receiver or an AM modulator for a transmitter. I'm using it nowhere near its full output power and you might even be able to substitute something of much lower power like an LM386. The amplified audio is then mixed in the balance modulator circuit with the RF input coming in from the FT817. The output presented is a double sideband signal on 7 MHz. That is fed through this low pass filter directly into the antenna connection. I tried various configurations of balance modulator. The one I ended up with was the one I used in the Beach 40 double sideband transceiver. The exception is I added many more diodes. More diodes allow you to increase the input, both RF and audio, to produce a higher level output. Yes, it's inefficient, but it means that you can generate a few tens of milliwatts without needing an extra RF amplifier circuit. Why did I do it? It's mainly a curiosity, but it means that if you are to build a refined version of this, you could convert any QRP CW transmitter, as long as it's frequency agile and stable enough, into a RISPR transmitter. All you need is your computer, an audio amplifier, and a low pass filter, along with the high level balance modulator. Here is the circuit. All those diodes make it look a lot more complicated on paper than it does in reality. The 1 watt signal comes in on 7 MHz and normally here you'd have a balance potentiometer of say 100 ohm. Instead I just used two 47 ohm resistors. I found the amount of balance was still adequate finding that I could get basically zero RF output power when I applied no audio. And that's an important test. If you are getting appreciable output power with a balance modulator, with a carrier coming in and no audio, then there's something wrong. It will be an AM-like signal with a carrier. The diodes here are all facing in one direction. Each leg has six diodes in series. If you don't have that number of diodes, you could use four or three or two you probably just won't get as much output power, but your drive requirements will be a bit less. So all the diodes are all facing that way, that way, that way, and that way. So it's almost like the symbols are chasing one another. The signal from the transmitter is applied to opposite sides of the diode square. And that's the same point at which your output signal is taken off. That is taken off via a ferrite toroid, a FT50-43. I've wrapped about 10 turns of wire in two windings. I haven't fiddled around with it to optimize it. I might be able to get a more efficient impedance transformation if I varied the turns ratio. Anyway, that's the output that goes to your antenna via a low pass filter. I've previously did a video on a small low pass filter. Mine does 80 and 40 meters. 
though you can get commercially made ones from QRP suppliers. So you just put the low pass filter in between your diode mixer output and the antenna. As for the other sides of the diodes, one side goes just to ground and the other side goes to ground via a 10 nanofarad disc ceramic capacitor. And it's at this point that you're applying the audio from the audio amplifier. If you don't have an audio amplifier straight away, you could use the output of a transistor radio or computer speakers or whatever for your experiments. I experimented with changing the input drive from half a watt up to one watt, then two and a half watts and five watts, and the reading hardly changed. So I suspect even at half a watt from the FT817, I might be overdriving the balance modulator for the number of diodes that I've got. Just looking at stations that have decoded my signals, there's only two VK2POP around 800 kilometers away and ZL1AVO at 2500 kilometers away. This is in the early evening. If I tried at other times, there would likely be other stations that would decode my transmission. Still, for a few milliwatts, I think that's quite impressive especially when you can boast that you're not using a final transistor. That's a quick outline of a high level balance modulator, able to put out enough power that you don't need a final transistor between it and the antenna. You could potentially even make a low power double sideband transmitter with this arrangement, though it won't necessarily be more efficient than one with a driver and final amplifier because your input power here is quite high, one watt, and there's a significant conversion loss in this high level balance modulator. You also need a fair amount of audio power going in. Still, it's an interesting novelty, and the results I got on Whisper means it's something worth persisting with.